Coming up on this week's episode of Eagle Vision News, students go crazy at this year's Midnight Madness. And Biola uses an interesting tool to promote friendship on campus. Plus, one man is willing to go to the extreme for a reality TV show, and critics are eating him alive. All this and more, next. Welcome to Eagle Vision News, I'm Natalie Grace. And I'm Tiffany Brevard. Let's take a look at this week's top stories. 15 hikers are reunited with their anxious families after being located by rescuers Monday morning. The hikers, all part of a church group, went missing Sunday night while in Eaton Canyon, a popular hiking spot in the Angeles National Forest north of Pasadena. The group began the hike Sunday morning but were reported missing when they didn't return on schedule. A sheriff's helicopter found the group around 9 a.m. and hoisted them up to be checked by medics later. One of the families says they trusted in God that he would do great things. And just when you think reality TV has reached its extreme limits, another crazy stunt comes slithering right at you. In this case, the Discovery Channel is airing a TV special called Eaten Alive, where apparently one man will be the main course in an anaconda's dinner menu. Discovery is keeping most of the details quiet, but sources say the man will be wearing protective gear and be covered in pig's blood before he is presumably eaten by the large snake. The show has drawn a lot of critics, saying that it's disgusting animal abuse. More than 3,000 signatures were collected online protesting the act. The man being eaten tweeted he would never hurt a living thing, and sources report the snake did not die while filming the stunt. The TV special is set to air on December 7th. A plane was caught making a crazy landing on tape at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. That's what happens when you fly into the Windy City. The pilot guided the plane sideways onto the runway before it safely landed. Hundreds of flights were delayed and dozens were canceled because of the windy weather. Imagine seeing that at LAX. This Sunday marked the beginning of University Day on Biola's campus. And to kick it off, students got the chance to go a little wild at the annual Midnight Madness. Check it out. Midnight Madness. The Biola event where over 2,500 students gathered to rally in support of the school's athletic teams. The doors have officially opened behind me, beginning the 2014 Midnight Madness. It's going to be a crazy night. Students fill Chase Gymnasium as the Biola dance crew pumped up the crowd to get the night started. For the first time ever, Biola's vocal jazz led the national anthem and wowed the crowd. The night was filled with a lot of cheering and dancing, and students got the chance to compete against each other in several games to receive spirit points for their dorms. And back by popular demand, the dance crew showed off their dance moves, leaving once again a performance that would have students talking. A dunking contest was also a main highlight of the event. Is this your first year playing for Biola basketball? Yes, it's my first time to play for Biola and uh, first time to the slam dunk contest and win right away. So it's really amazing. I'm glad about it. The night concluded with introducing the men's and women's basketball teams along with the rest of Biola's athletes making their way to the center of the court. As students rushed the court to celebrate with them, the night ended with the traditional confetti toss, making Midnight Madness yet another successful event. This has been Daisy Villanueva, Eagle Vision News. That looked like so much fun, and you were there, weren't you, Tiffany? Yeah, I sang the national anthem with vocal jazz, and the crowd was going wild for all the sports teams, and at the end there was a confetti canyon. So it was a lot of fun. You should go next year. S super cool. I'll go next year for sure. Well, this morning it was chilly. It was about 70 degrees, and Nicole, are we going to be expecting these temperatures for the rest of the week? We'll get back to that in a little bit, Tiffany, but let's take a look at this really gorgeous snowfall in Minnesota, and this gear is ready for ski season, but let's take a look at today's forecast. Today was 65 in the morning, 70 in the afternoon, and a 55 in the evening. Sunrise was at 621 a.m., and sunset was at 453 p.m. Let's take a look at that satellite map. All right, snowfall starting in Minnesota, then coming down near Colorado area. A little bit of rain action going down in Cal I mean, Florida and South Carolina area. But let's take a look at that gorgeous seven day forecast. 
This week, scarves, hats, boots, whatever is going to be really cool this week. So let's take a look at that. On Veterans Day, it's going to be 69 with a little drizzle, 69 again on Wednesday, and then 70, a little drizzle again, but 70 degrees. Friday, 71, and then throughout the week, mid-70s. But hey, wear the boots. It's great. It's going to be good. Back to you, Natalie. While making new friends can be hard, students were given the opportunity to meet new people in an interesting way as a part of Biola's Friendship and Community Week. Reporter Nick McNeil gives us a look. This week was Friendship and Community Awareness at Biola University. Biola's Take a Seat and Make a Friend encourages the community to go outside their comfort zone and make a new friend. Students explore ways to strengthen their friendship with others as they begin their week. I'm here with Hannah Seals. Hannah, have you done this uh, Take a Seat Make a Friend yet? I have not. She has not. What person in the Bible do you most closely identify with? I would say right now I closely identify with Hannah in the Bible, ironically. Um, she prays to the Lord a lot, trying to um, praying for her son. And while I'm not praying for her son right now, I'm praying to the Lord to reveal um, what I'm to do in the future. And so I'm kind of like left um, just in prayer and waiting right now. And so um, I feel like I can really turn that way as a senior, wondering what to do next in life. Is there a story behind your name? And if so, what is it? Um, story behind my name is my parents were traveling in Washington and they found this lake and it was called Lake Chelan but my mom pronounced it wrong and was like, oh Lake Shalin, that's such a beautiful name and so she was pregnant with me and knew I was a girl so she was keeping it in her mind and then uh, she had a baby shower and my cousin knit her this quilt and then on the back it said said like made in Lake Chelan or like she knitted it in Lake Chelan and then my mom was like oh no it's fate and so she pronounced it wrong but she liked Shalin better so she kept that. This is Nick McNeil, Eagle Vision News. Well that's all the time that we have this week but be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more Biola stories. And if you have any story ideas that you want us to cover you can go ahead and send them to us on any of those sites. Until then I'm Natalie Grace. And I'm Tiffany Brevard. Thanks for watching.